God is good. God is, I know we're getting to the word a little later than we usually do, but I hope that's okay. I want to acknowledge our pastors. Can we put our hands together for our pastors? You know, good leadership is really hard to find. And when God sends you gifts, come on, y'all, we can do better than that. Let's honor them. Let's honor them. We were, yeah, yeah, yeah. Make them blush. Come on now. Hallelujah. We were, we were in staff meeting the other day and just continuing to hear their hearts for this ministry, for, for, for you all, for the city, and just, just the whole team, just the entire team. And, you know, it's an honor and a privilege to be a part of this team and serve with so many great pastors and leaders. Um, it's an amazing thing. And so I'm, I'm excited, man. We've been in Joshua, and God has been speaking. But I'm stirred tonight. I don't, I don't know. I just don't know. I can get wild sometimes, so I don't, I don't know what the Lord is going to do. But we're in Joshua chapter 6. We're going to close this series out with a bang. Amen. We're about to possess some things. Joshua chapter 6, verse 1 through 5. God's going to speak, amen. God, we just thank you. He's already here. Hallelujah, Lord. Just have your way. Now, Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have given Jericho into your hand, its kings and the mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all you men of war. You shall go all around the city once. This you shall do for six days. And seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horn before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times. And the priests shall blow the trumpets. It shall come to pass. Someone say, it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. When they make a long blast with the ram's horn, that when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with a great shout, then the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people shall go up every man straight before him. Then lastly, I just want to read Isaiah 54, 16 through 17. Uh, we know this, but the word of the Lord says, Behold, I have created the blacksmith who blows the coals in the fire and brings forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the spoiler to destroy. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against you in judgment shall be condemned. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me. I want to draw our thought for tonight to end this series from verse 5, uh, the thought for tonight is it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, that your word is rich. God, we thank you, Lord, that the word, God, is a lamp into our feet and a light into our path, Father. We ask that you speak to us tonight through your word, some truth that will build us up, God, that we will go out and expand your kingdom, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I've noticed just through life that as you go through life, life will try to get you to focus on your deficits. Life will try to get you to focus on the things that may not be going right, the things that you don't have, the things that you that aren't going well in your life. It's like you can be having a good week and then all of a sudden you have a whole month that's no good. And life will try to get you to focus on the things that you're believing for that you, that you yet not have and try to make you think that you'll never possess those. I was in prayer over the last couple of weeks, and as I was just sitting before God in worship, the Holy Spirit just reminded me, I'm all you need. I'm all you need. Sometimes we, 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 we look at the thing that we don't have and we feel as if 
if, if we had that relationship or if we had that job or if we had those connections, that then we would, we, we, we would be whole and we would be healthy. But God said, no, I, I'm all you need. And this was the same situation and circumstance that Adam and Eve found themselves in. They had everything that they need in the relationship, in the presence of God. It's interesting as we talk about possessing the promise and as we've been studying Joshua, we've come to understand that God cut covenant with Abram, changed his name to Abraham. But when you really look at the story and you understand what happened, God comes to Abram and says, leave everything you have because I'm all you need. We read the scripture and referenced it. Psalms 119, 105, we know what it says. The word of God is a lamp into our feet and a light into our path. When we really break down that scripture, the word of God is telling us that the life of the believer is revealed and constructed by God. The life of the believer is revealed and constructed by God, not by man and not by man's systems. The book of Habakkuk simply says in chapter 3, verse 19, the Lord God is my strength, my source of courage, my invincible army. He has made my feet steady and sure like hinds feet and makes me walk forward with spiritual confidence on my high places of challenge and responsibility. God reinforces this belief that he's all we need when we look at John chapter 4. And we understand the story with the woman at the well. And the scripture reads here, verses 7 through 10, it says, A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into a city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, how is it that you, being a Jew, ask me? Ask drink from me, a Samaritan woman, for Jews have no dealings with Samarians. Jesus said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that says this to you, give me drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The revelation that we see here is that Jesus is trying to explain to this woman that I'm all you need. You've come to this well and you think you need this water, but I'm the living water that you need. He reveals that there's a gap of revelation in the life of this woman. He said, if you knew what you don't know, you wouldn't be asking what you're asking for. Jesus reinforces this belief that he's all that we need. He goes forward to reinforce this belief. And we see this in, in John chapter 15 and verse 25 and 26. He's speaking to his disciples and he's reinforcing this idea that, 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 that he is all that we need. We see this and he says, these things I have spoken to you while being present with you, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. He reinforces this belief that I am all that you need in helping us to understand that there is an educational gap. And there's something that you don't know, but if you have this understanding, you'll have all that you need. He says the Holy Spirit will now teach you. And so when we realize that, that, that God is all that we need, there is a learning and there is the education that we need to live successfully here in the earth. He moves forward to reinforce this idea here in John chapter 16, verse 12 through 14. Again, speaking of the gift of the Holy Spirit, he says, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth and he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak 
and he will tell you things to come. He reinforces this idea that I'm all that you need. And so we don't have to look outside of who God is because in the relationship with God, everything is sufficient. He is our source, and so we don't have to worry about what we don't have. If there's anything that we lack, he can teach us. If there's direction that we need, he can guide us. Because we have to have the understanding that he's all that we need. We see this in the life of Peter. We know Peter was a disciple of Christ, but Peter was one that chose to deny Christ. And he denied Christ and said that he did not know him. And at that time, Peter lost his, fr he lost his friends. He lost what would have been his profession. He lost his confidence and the clarity of the assignment that was on his life. But it was when Jesus came back to him in John chapter 21, where he then reinstated him, where he then pulled him back into his bosom and asked him the question. He said, Peter, do you love me? Not Peter, do you love your friends? Not, Peter, do you love the city that you're in? Not, Peter, do you love the job? He says, do you love me? He says, yes. He says, then, well, feed my sheep. And Peter then responds to the calling of God. We know that Pentecost comes in Acts chapter 2, and at that time, Peter is filled with the Holy Spirit and is now moved back into his purpose and has the clarity and the confidence to move in the thing that God called him to move in because at that moment, Peter had a revelation, and that revelation was that God was all he needed. He didn't need the validation from his peers. He didn't need to be accepted by the religious people who, 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 who approached him about his relationship with Jesus. When it came down to it, Peter realized that God was all that he needed. And so when we look at the scripture, what we have to understand is that Peter was one who preached and the church was birthed. But the church was not birthed when Peter started preaching. The church was birthed when Peter stood up because the scripture says Peter arose with the other 11. What are you saying, preacher? What I'm saying is that when you have an understanding that God is all that you need and you don't need the validation of other people and you don't need other people patting you on your back and telling you this is the direction that you need to go. When you understand that God has your back and God's fighting your battles and God is the one that's giving you the strength and the power that you need, you can stand up and you can step into the assignment that God has for you. And so we see this again with Joshua. God comes to Joshua, and he approaches Joshua, and the first thing he says to him is, arise. The promise was not possessed here in chapter 6. The promise was possessed when Joshua decided to arise. And some of us have to come into an understanding, and some of us have to get a boldness and a tenacity and a hunger and a fervency for God to realize that it don't matter if nobody goes with me. It doesn't matter if anybody believes. When God calls you into a thing, you have to be willing to arise. And the moment you're willing to arise, you already have the thing that God said he was going to give you. You just have to have the boldness to get up. And so Joshua moved on a word. Joshua moved on a command. Joshua moved on the nudging of the Holy Spirit. Joshua moved when he heard the whispering of God in his ear. And some of us have been sitting for too long when God has been speaking to us and God has been nudging us and God has been calling us. But you got to have enough faith to get up and move when you just hear the word arise. You might not know the direction that the Lord is wanting to take you. You may have felt like you've been in the wilderness for this last season, but you've got to trust and believe that the Lord is going to order your steps and God's going to bring you you into a wealthy place if you have the faith to believe that you can arise and come up from where you are. Nudge your neighbor and say, it shall come to pass. And so we see Joshua has been following 
after God. He's been, he's been, he's been listening to God, and he's been doing everything that the Lord had, had, had told him to do. And, and the interesting thing that we find here is that now he finds himself on the cusp of leaving, leading the children of Israel into the promised land. They're about to, 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 to go into Jericho and seize the promise and seize the blessing of the Lord. But we can't, we, we can't jump to chapter 6 yet unless we go back and look at chapter 5. We preached it two weeks ago. But, but, but it's interesting here because Joshua initiated the process when he decided to follow after God. But we see here that the commander of the army of the Lord is about to initiate the final process in the people of God possessing the promise of God. And so he comes to Joshua, and, and Joshua asks the question. He says, whose side are you on? Are you on our side, or are you on the side of our enemy? And the commander of the army of the Lord says, I ain't on either one of y'all sides. The question for the church today is whose side are you on? And what you have to understand when looking at this passage of Scripture is that God had a problem of his own. It wasn't with Joshua and the children of Israel. It was with the Canaanites. And so what we understand here when we're looking at Scripture is that God had his own problem and he had his own war to fight. Arthur Pink calls these the wars of the Lord. What was the war that the Lord was about to engage in? He, he's about to engage in battle with the Canaanites for our sake. So the Canaanites were devoted to idolatry, using divination, being enchanters, witches, charmers, consulters with familiar spirits. Let me read this again because we're going somewhere. The Canaanites and that spirit was devoted to idolatry using divination, being enchanters, witches, charmers, consulters with familiar spirits. So we look at Deuteronomy 18, 9 through 14, and the scripture declares, when you come into the land which the Lord your God has given you, you shall not learn to follow the abomination of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire, or one, of, or one who practices witchcraft, or soothsayer, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who conjures spells, or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead. For all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord your God drives them out from among you. You shall be blameless before the Lord your God. For these nations which you, sh which you shall dispossess, someone say dispossess, listen to soothsayers and diviners. But as for you, the Lord your God has appointed such for you. It's an interesting thing because this is God's battle. It's not, it's not Joshua's battle. It's not the children of Israel's battle. This is God's battle. And what I find interesting is that God will put your blessing, he will put your promise, and he will put your promotion in an environment where his enemy is. And some of us are frustrated because God has put our promise, he has put our promotion, and he has put our blessing in an environment not where your enemy is. It's where his enemy is. Why does he do that? Because we know now that Joshua and the children of Israel's hearts have been circumcised. Joshua just came up out of worship, and so now God has a pure vessel that he can send into battle. The issue with some of us is we're looking at people and we're frustrated thinking they don't like us. It's not you that they don't like. You've got a pure heart and God has already, God has already cleaned you. And so there's nothing that the enemy can find in you. They're frustrated with the God that's in you because God has sent you into an environment where his enemies are because he knows he can trust you to fight that battle. And so we're in a season now, church, where God is saying, I'm coming to dispossess every Canaanite spirit. I don't know who I'm talking to on tonight, but the spirit of the Lord is saying to you that I've come to dispossess every foul spirit that is not like me. And so the commander of the army of the Lord has come to dispossess 
the Canaanite spirit that has, has, has a grip on your promise, that has a grip on your blessing, that has a grip on the thing that God has already said, I've given to you. That word dispossessed means to put out of possession hmm, or, or, or occupancy. And so what we have to understand is that, that, that the Canaanite spirit is trying to control your home. That Canaanite spirit is trying to control your job. That Canaanite spirit is trying to control your mind and your heart. That Canaanite spirit is trying to run rampant through your house. And that Canaanite spirit is even trying to run rampant through the church. What we see through the passage of Scripture here is the closer you get to your promise and the closer you get to the thing that God wants to bless you with, you realize that a spirit has possession of what God wants you to have. And so some of us are on the cusp of what God has for us, but it's a Canaanite spirit that is occupying what God wants you to have. Occupying your blessing. Occupying what the Lord has said, I've already given to you. But God says, you're not going to fight this battle on your own. God says, you, you're not going to be the one that's going to take the blows. God says, you're not going to be the one that's going to be stretched out on the battlefield, being anguished. I've sent the commander of my army that is coming to strengthen you while you're on the battlefield. You're not going to lose this battle this time. Some of us have been in other wars and other spiritual battles, and every single time we rise up to try to fight, we've been defeated. But the commander of the army of the Lord in verse 5 stood up and said, I I've come now, and I've come to declare to you all tonight that your strength is coming tonight to you, that your fight is coming back to you, that your energy is coming back to you, and you're going to be able to stand on the battlefield, and this ain't no flesh and blood. We bind in every devil. We bind in every spirit. We bind in every witch. We bind in every warlock, and we stepping into the promise of God, and we're going to possess what God has for us. Touch your neighbor and say, it shall come to pass. Scripture reads in Isaiah 55, 10 and 11, For as the rain comes down, and the snow from heaven, and does not return there, but waters the earth, and it brings forth bud, that it gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. We know this, so shall my word that comes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper to the thing in which I sent it. And I'm here to tell you on tonight, if it came out of the mouth of God, there ain't no foul spirit in hell that can stop what God wants to do in your life. I wish I had somebody on a Wednesday night that would shake themselves, that would stand up on their feet and snatch whatever it is they believe God has for them because if God said it, it's not going to return back to him void. It might take one year. It might take two years. It might take three years. It might take four years. But however long it takes, God says it ain't coming back to me void. It's going to accomplish what I said in the place that I sent it. I felt something strong on me tonight. I feel like preaching in this place. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. We're not going to leave this season without possessing everything that God has for us. We're not going to allow another devil to intimidate us. We're not going to allow another spirit to shut us down. We're going to rise up and we're going to get what God has for us. Hallelujah. 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 And so the scripture says, God comes to Joshua. We know that the blessing's tied up, it's tangled up. It says Jericho is securely shut up because of the children of Israel. Some of y'all, y'all don't know how bad you are. Stuff is, it, 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 it's on lockdown because of the anointing that's on your life. The, the, the scripture says that they were in fear. Another passage says, their hearts had melted because of the testimony of the children of Israel. They had heard about their God, 
and what God had did for his people. This is what you got to understand. I don't care if you don't have a current testimony. The enemy knows who Yahweh is. Grab your sister's testimony and remind the devil of what the enemy could not do regarding your sister. It don't have to be your testimony. The enemy knows that God's fighting the battle for his children. The enemy knows that God is fighting the battle for his church. And so you might not have a testimony right now, but you know somebody that God had delivered. You just remind the devil that he could not take out your sister, so therefore he can't take out you. You remind the devil he couldn't take out your mama, so he ain't taking out you. You might not have the testimony. But the city was shut up because of the children of Israel. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given you Jericho. Why is this so important? Because b b b before Joshua had laid on his face and committed his life to worship, he went and he tried to look. In verse chapter 5, you got to read the text. It said Joshua went and he looked and he saw a man. But it was after he came up out of worship that God comes to him and now he says, see. And so I want to encourage all of my worshipers on tonight. Don't stop worshiping. And I know you went and looked before, but God is saying now it's time to go see. What are you saying, preacher? I know you looked at the house before, but now you need to go see yourself in the house. I know you looked at the car before, but now you need to see yourself driving the car. I know you looked at the degree program before, but now you need to see yourself with the degree in your hand. I, I know you looked at the doctor's report, but you need to see yourself healed and walking in your deliverance. I've come to tell somebody as we close out this series that it shall come to pass. You got to see it. And then the scripture declares, he says, you're not just going to see it, Joshua. You're about to possess it. It's, it, it's going to be in your hand this time. We, we're, we're moving forward. I know we've been wandering long enough, and we've been on the banks long enough, and we've been seeing what, 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 what God has for us. But God says in this season, now you're going to possess that promise. Some of us have been in the state of vision for the last decade, and we've just been dreaming, and we've been looking at some things. But God said, no, 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 no. It's time now to possess the thing that I'm given you. We're moving past vision and God says, I'm about to put some stuff in your hands because you've been faithful. I'm about to put some stuff in your hands because I love you. I'm about to put some stuff in your hands because I made a promise to Abram and we are partakers of the promises of God through Christ Jesus. I've come to encourage you on tonight. It's about to be in your hand. He says, I've given to you. So get ready to see what the Lord is about to do in this next season. It, 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 it shall come to pass. And then this messed me up, Pastor Patrick. Verse 3, it says, you shall march around the city, all you men of war. I'm wondering where these men came from. Brother Tali picked up here. Scripture said in verse chapter 5, all the men of war had died in the wilderness. So, 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 so something happened when their hearts were circumcised. Something, something happens when, when, when you find your place in a, 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 a state of worship. And, and God all of the sudden says, all you men of war, but, but, but the men died. And so it's, where were they trained at? What, what, what took place during that, during, during that short season of transformation. This is what I do know. I could not walk off of this platform and go straight into active duty. All my military folks say amen. amen. 
But there is a moment when God arrests your heart and there is a moment in the walk of the believer when you find yourself in a place of worship. I'm talking about a lifestyle of worship where you can have a suddenly moment in God and you will get up off of your face and you will be a totally different person. And so from the moment they were circumcised of the heart and from the moment Joshua entered into that place of worship, God said, All the men of war died in the wilderness, but you've progressed in me in such a short season. You are now a man of war. I have come to declare that there are some suddenlies that are about to take place in your life because of how you have postured yourself in the presence of your God. Don't get weary in well-doing, baby. I said don't get weary in well-doing, baby, for in due season you shall reap that harvest if you faint not. All of you men of war, I know I'm talking to a church, but I feel like I'm talking to an army here. Are there any warriors in the house on tonight? Is there anybody in the house on tonight that is a part of the army of the Lord? So God says, I want you to see because you're about to possess and you're going to have the ability to to fight for what it is that I've given you. So we look at this passage of scripture here. And, and, and it blew my mind. Pastor Patrick and I were, were, were talking about this. And, you know, he's such a great preacher. He just knows everything. He just knows everything. So we were looking at the strategy of God. And how God uses everything in our life, to work as plan in our life. And we look at the scripture here, verse 4 says, the seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times and the priest shall blow the trumpets. There's five levels of human effectiveness. This is corporate talk now. Human effectiveness just simply describes one's awareness of their performance, skill, or competence when attempting to get things done. So there's five levels of human effectiveness which describes one's awareness of their performance skill level or competence when attempting to get things done. So level one is simply, I don't know, and I don't know, I don't know. That's level one. Level two is, I don't know, and I know I don't know. Level three is, things are working, but I don't know why. Level four simply says, I know, and I know that I know, right? Level five says, I know, and I know that I know, and I've turned it over to being natural, free-flowing, spontaneous, and consistent. This is a level of mastery or muscle memory. It's, it, it's called unconsciously competent. So the children of Israel were in the wilderness for 40 years doing what? Wandering in circles. They walked in the wilderness wandering in circles. What they didn't know is that they were in the hardest season of their life. God was creating within them a spirit of mastery because what he did what used what they learned in the wilderness as they walked in circles to turn around to walk in circles around their promise. And I'm closing, but all I've come to tell y'all is that God is about to bless the thing you've already been doing. God is about to bless the thing that you've already been doing. Some of us look at our skill level 
and the places that we've been and, and, and the length of time that we feel like we've been stuck in a place. And God says, no, baby, I'm about to use all things for your good. And I know you feel like you've been walking in circles in the wilderness, but no, 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 no. I'm creating a master while you walking around circles in that wilderness. I'm about to use every season of your life where you felt like you were defeated. I'm about to use every season of your life where you felt like you were used and abused and rejected. Every season of your life where you were confused and frustrated. Every season of your life where you were hurt. Every season of your life where you know you did wrong and it took you years to repent. God says, it's okay. I'm using all of that to bring you into your place of promise. And so they walk circles around their blessing. God used the thing that looked like was ridiculous. Look, it looked like they were just stuck. Looked like they would never get to the promised land. Looked like that they, they would never see the thing that God told that he would reveal in their lives. And so be encouraged on tonight because God says one way or another, I'm going to get you there because it shall come to pass. Amen. Let's stand and put our hands together for the word on tonight. Come on, let's stand and put our hands together for the word on tonight. Come on, let's put our hands together for the word on tonight. Hallelujah, Lord. Come on, let's give a shout to our God. He is worthy. Hallelujah. We bless your name, God. We thank you, Father. And we say yes and amen to your promise. I just want to pray over you as we, as, as we, as we seal this series. We just know and believe that as, as, as brothers and sisters in Christ, as a corporate house, we're about to step into the greatest seasons God has for us. And the Lord, he, he brought us this way to show us that it shall come to pass. Every promise that he's spoken over your life. And so, Lord, as we end out this series, God, I just bless your people. Lord, I thank you, God, for their hunger for you, God. Many of them come out every single week, God, desiring to hear a word from you, Lord. God, I ask right now, Lord, that you would seal it up in their heart and their spirit. God, that they'll continue to run after you, Father. And God, they'll take everything that's been taught through this series and apply it, God, and have great testimony, Lord of what you've done in their life, God. Many of them have dreams and visions. God, you've spoken promises over their life, God. I thank you that this is the season that they're stepping into it. No more hindrances. No more fear. No more doubt. We thank you right now, God, for the work you're doing, God. We thank you, God, that you swept every house clean on tonight and that the enemy is defeated. We give you the praise, we give you the glory and honor, and we bless you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.